Hi, in the previous video we looked at uh, troubleshooting and attempting to repair this uh, heap of crap Sonic brand, uh, you know, one hung low brand LCD uh, TV and well we pretty much uh, ruled out uh, most of the power supply and your traditional uh, failure points with the electrolytic capacitors. There was nothing wrong with those. I measured rails and scoped it and uh, got it with the meter and everything looked fine and, but it seemed very intermittent. Now a lot of people uh, responded with lots of comments so thank you very much for that. Uh, tips and all sorts of things and as to be expected everyone sort of had like a different opinion of what was wrong with this. Some said oh it's beyond economical repair and well it certainly could be but Upon replaying the video, I noticed something that I didn't notice before, and that I didn't notice at the time, because I wasn't actually looking at it, and uh, a couple of people also uh, noted it as well. They, they saw it on the video, and it was when I actually, uh, when I was playing around with the thing, I touched the TV like this, and it changed. It, the image actually vanished, or, or flickered, or did something. So... Um, that indicates that there's some sort of physical, it was too much of a coincidence, okay, that I just, like, I was playing around with it, and I was look, going towards the back like this, and, uh, uh, you know, I just touched, gently touched the front of it, and the image vanished, so, really, that indicates that there's a physical uh, component to this fault. It doesn't mean it's the only fault, but certainly a physical component, and it's most likely the main fault, a physical component in terms of some sort of connection or something like that. And that makes sense when you're talking about one of the symptoms for this thing was that it got, uh, it was getting audio. Audio was working fine, but we were getting no picture. That was one of the symptoms of various uh, things that were going wrong and very, you know, flickering in the display and stuff like that. Certainly could be a bad contact. Now we ruled out the power supply, of course, so the process, the power supply is basically powering all of the processing uh, engine down here in the main board and through that, through to the LCD panel up the top here. So, uh, really, I'm going to rule out any connections to do with the power supply, all the power supply go into the processor board here. So what's left? Well, the only thing left is this multi-way ribbon cable here going from the processor board up to this board up here, which upon investigation is uh, apparently called a TCON board, a timing control board, and that uh, basically uh, splits out or handles the timing and splitting of the signal going from the main processor board to powering the LCD display up here. I've seen ones where they're uh, this sort of stuff is embedded on the main top. There's a whole top board up here, but we've basically got two big multi-way flat flex ribbon cables going here. So I'm going to suspect that it's one of those ribbon cables. First thing I'm going to do, though, is power this thing on, see if I can reproduce the fault uh, based on just uh, physically tapping or, you know, physically flexing the display, or maybe I'll get in here with my poker and I'll have a poke around on the, an insulated poker, of course, uh, poke around with the uh, flat flex ribbon cables in there and see if anything happens. Let's give it a go. Now the thing just powered up and uh, the I got the power up sound and everything like that, but I didn't, uh, I'll turn my LCD around here, but I didn't get uh, anything on the display, so let me start having a poke around. So, like, it like it seems to be like completely gone now. That's what I said at the end of the last video. And uh, the backlight's on, and of course, all the power supply stuff is still working, but sort of give it a flex. No, I think it's sort of permanently, permanently gone now, so I don't like, look at that, it was, ni it was nicer when it was intermittent, now it's like completely failed, so that's good and bad. Um, in this case though, it's, it's kind of bad from the aspect of me trying to play around with the thing. Anyway, what I'll do now is I'll reseat these uh, flat flex connectors, because these can be a pain in the ass, uh, these flat flex connectors. So I'll reseat those and uh, turn the power off first, reseat them, and then uh, try it again. So yeah, these can actually be a real problem. So what you do is you just lift up the connectors.
connector on these. Some of these work uh, differently to others, but this one is uh, designed to pop out like that. And these multi-way ribbons, they can be quite troublesome. The, the, the actual ribbon itself, like these things inside, never break. Um, virtually never do. So, But the connectors can be a bit dicky, especially if they were put in uh, with somebody not using the right tongue angle. Um, so anyway, let me uh, let me reseat that sucker. And uh, is it in? Ah, uh, sorry, my fingers are in the way here. You won't be able to see anything. But let's push that back in and reseat that sucker there. And I'll just repower it step by step. So I'll know if it comes good now. I'll know which one it actually is. Saw the backlight come on there, but no. No boot image. There we go. So it wasn't that connector. Actually, just as a little aside, this is a good example of capacitor dielectric absorption. Now, what I've done is I've uh, disconnected the TV, okay? So that main uh, capacitor, as I explained in the last video, is uh, still retaining a ton of charge, okay? There's no bleed resistor across that. So that's gonna, still going to have a couple of hundred volts on it easy, and it'll take you know, it could take tens of minutes for that to actually decay. Now, as I said, you could use a multimeter with the uh, low low impedance uh, voltage measure, usually designed for eliminating ghost voltages and stuff like that. But you can use it for safely discharging a capacitor like this because it's low impedance. So we'll get in there and you'll probably see the voltage shoot up quite quickly. It might even overload and then... Yeah, overload, 40 volts, boom, and then drop down to zero volts. Now, look, I'm holding the probes on there, okay? So this capacitor is now, you would think, discharged. Look, 0.1 volts, okay? But due to the f phenomenon of dielectric absorption, there we go, it's discharged to zero, okay? We're to within 0.1 volts there. All right, so what we'll do now, it's like a minute later... I'll switch it over to volts DC, okay, so we're the high impedance input instead of the low, like 10 meg input impedance instead of the low input impedance of a couple of K, uh, which we discharge that capacitor with. We saw it discharged to zero, but watch this. I mean, this is a significant time later. Look at this. It's recovered to 2.9 volts and increasing. That is dielectric absorption, okay? We'll do it again. Here we go. There we go, I just charge the thing up, we'll change it to low impedance mode, we'll do this, boom, there we go, it's discharging and we'll do it straight away now, okay, it's completely discharged, look at that, let's make sure it goes down to 0, 0.0, come on, ah, near enough, good enough for Australia, here we go, and look at that voltage, creeping back up. That's dielectric absorption, the phenomenon of a capacitor to recover from its charge after it's been discharged. And I'll leave that to you to go Google and have a research on dielectric absorption because it is quite a uh, interesting subject. So well worth looking at. Now, this connector up the top here, I've taken that out. It's a different type. It's a physically got a connector uh, mounted on the end of the flat flex like that. It's got some shielding tape over that. So I'll just reseat that back in and see if that makes a difference. And I'll also just, might as well just reseat these suckers as well. But hey, I'll do it step by step. No, still no boot image. Bummer. Next up, we got the top side connector. Absolutely tiny. And these things are a even more of a pain in the ass than one down on the processor board. So, I mean, you know, there's not much that can go wrong on this uh, T-Con board here, really. I mean, there's a couple of passive bypasses. Oh, does, I don't know, hang on. Uh, sorry about the shaky image here. I can't uh, get my macro lens on my tripod. Does that look like a fuse? Hmm. Well, I've taken this little T-Con board out here. It was stuck on with a uh, double-sided tape held into a little plastic uh, holder on there and uh, it's an LG display so uh, presumably it's an LG uh, panel in here so LG display TL2336 uh, ML couldn't get any uh, data on that off the bat but uh, anyway it is there you go LG display co limited 
and uh, designed in 2009, probably reused in a whole bunch of different uh, panels, no doubt. So um, this takes the uh, differential, here we go, takes the differential pair LVDS signals coming in. There you go. And uh, basically uh, does timing and control stuff and has uh, differential pairs coming out that go to the main uh, panel and drives the panel. But look at this. Look at this. Look what we have here. We have ourselves, when you, have, when you see a, uh, a flat flex cable like this and you've got multiple pins in parallel like we do here, uh, that's obviously the power input pin because they need, you know, a fair bit of power. These flat flex and these connectors um, don't have much current capacity per pin and per wire. So often it's very common to parallel them up like that. In this case, we've got four passing through a cup, not one, but two zero ohm resistors there. And they go into what looks like, there you go, a poly switch or fuse that uh, then it goes through to the bypass caps on here. So let's measure that sucker and uh, see what we get because I tried playing around with the connector up here and that didn't fix the issue. So, hmm. So let's measure that puppy. And. Hello. I'm making contact there. there that's my probe shorted out. Hello. I think we have a fail. That is open, and that sucker ain't going to work. That's why we're now getting no picture at all, and no amount of prodding and poking and shaking and um, trying to coerce this thing into working. We'll get that to work. But got ourselves a blown fuse or poly switch on the board there. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, offhand. Uh, TC, um, not sure of the code there, but geez, yep, that ain't going to work. We need to fix that. Now, I'm not sure of the exact uh, brand of that, but I did find a reference to TK in a little fuse data sheet, and it is actually fuse, not a poly uh, fuse or a poly switch, like a uh, resettable uh, fuse. I think it is just a fuse. That's why it's uh, blowing like that. I'm not sure why it would have uh, blown, whether or not it was, you know, just a dodgy uh, part that was going intermittent and eventually failed, I don't know, or the intermittency uh, could have to do with the fact that it was something to do with with the flat flex connections and then I don't know some surge current eventually took it out eh, I you know I don't know but anyway that um, that marking is for according to little fuse uh, one and a half amps so I don't have one of those to hand but I can probably bodge something in there that's for sure or hey just to get it up and running eh short it out well, the best I uh, had to hand was a uh, axial fuse like this, so I just bodged that in there. Eh, that'll get us up and running. All right, let's give it a bell again and plug it in. I've reconnected the board up and uh, let's give it a go. Hello, McFly. There we go. Hey, there we go. Look, look. Well, not surprising, because that thing did uh, did blow, so of why it actually did that, but look at that. There we go, I've got our image back. Sorry I can't uh, get the camera on a good angle. Okay, let's uh, have a poke around here, and uh, I'll turn the LCD around so I can actually see it. It's good to have a mirror or something like that for this sort of thing, because you don't want to go sort of... Uh, uh, sticking your head around the front like this with your tongue at the right angle trying to poke at the back and eh, not that great as i said insulated poker but uh, uh all right hey look at that i'm touching that ribbon cable at the top that's the one on the bottom of the t-con connector okay that's the top of the t-con connector this is the ribbon cable down on the processor board there you go. So it is. Look at that. Son of a gun. I'll hold that in. I'll physically hold that in. Hold it and release. Ta-da! Look at that. Ha-ha! <laughs> it is an intermittent 
connector, that one with the actual connector on it. It's not the one, it's not the actual flat flex one, it's the one with the um, with the physical sort of, you know, semi-latching connector on there. But I think, I think we've solved our issue. I'm not sure why that fuse went. Uh, no idea. Um, I'm not going to fuss over that at this stage. Uh, we've got ourselves a win. So there you go. It does look like that one is the culprit. And yeah, I was like poking that connector down in, and down in there like that. And I can actually see a reflection off the back wall of that thing actually going off and on. So there you go. Just physically poking that a bit can cause that of course um, you'll get thermal issues with this as well as the as the thing heats up you know a slight expansion in uh, stuff and so that can uh, cause an issue both mechanically as part of the thing and also perhaps uh, thermally so um, because you're going to get that heat rise of course from the uh, from the big power supply right down under here so there you go that was the issue. Um, well, I'm going to say it is anyway. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to call that one uh, done and dusted. I'm going to have a bit more uh, play around with it um, to sort of, you know, uh, see exactly. I don't think it's a reflow issue. I don't think it's a solder joint on there. I did look at this under the uh, Mantis microscope and it looked pretty good. So I'm not going to like reflow that board or anything like that. It's not uh, It's not worth it, I don't think. But uh, yeah, I'm going to certainly have a, a bit more play around with this uh, with this connector here. Got to be careful because it is right next to the uh, power supply here. So, you know, um, best to dick around with that with the power off if you're physically going to get your little uh, fingers in there and have a play. But there you go. I'm going to call that one found and potentially fixed. Awesome. And I've had a bit more trouble with this thing, so I've just sprayed some uh, contact cleaner up into there and the contacts as well. I don't trust this bloody connector. It's, ah, uh, man, it just fit, looks and feels dodgy. Don't like it. It doesn't lock into place properly and, ah, uh, nah. Now, I've actually found the thing is more reliable once I've actually got it out and free hanging like that. So maybe I'm re I should really get in there tape up, you know, bog up that connector uh, or something like that and maybe refeed it back. I could even put like a mylar sheet over the uh, power supply, some sort of insulating sheet over the uh, power supply and just, I don't know, leave it free hanging, I guess. Um, you know, once I do up that connector and everything, can't see why I couldn't uh, do that, but or maybe even uh, feed it back under once I've um, really fixed up this connector and, you know, taped it up, maybe bogged it up properly, I don't know, but yeah, it seems to be going okay now with it uh, free hanging, so it's definitely the issue. Now there's one viewer who did actually uh, suggest that a common issue with these things is as the um, backlight ages, it starts to interfere with the LVDS lines, and one way to solve it is to uh, put shielding tape like all over the thing, like completely cover the thing to isolate it. I I don't know, I don't necessarily buy into that one. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're certain because we were getting like physical uh, poking, you know, I could physically make it come and go like that. And well, yeah, proximity, eh, not a huge deal. But anyway, um, yeah, this thing is essentially uh, fixed, back up and running. It works very reliably now. I've really uh, taped up, you know, I've uh, put uh, tape on there to really physically hold the connector in uh, place. And it seems to work really well now. Ta-da! That's a win. It's back together and I'm all happy. And uh, I've, you know, banged it around, done all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful stuff. And uh, it seems fine. I don't have the uh, um, uh, Raspberry Pi plugged in anymore. But uh, there you go. Menu. Everything's fine. Bang, bang, bang. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, that was just, <laughs> that wasn't me. That was just uh, the timeout on the menu. So everything's fine. Looks like we had at least a dodgy uh, flat flex, um, one of those flat flex interconnect connectors in there. Real pain in the butt um, on that T-Con board and that blown fuse. I'm not exactly sure why the uh, fuse blew, but uh, replaced it with the same uh, Rady one and everything's hunky-dory. That's a win. Catch you next time.